Hey there guys and gals, Luke and Susan here with the Outdoor Gear Review. Thank you very much for tuning in for this series. Now this is a three-part backpacking and hiking tip series, which we will go over a ton of tips for newbies, intermediates, and advanced hikers and backpackers. Now, every single tip may not apply to you. That's right. Right, but in the future, it very well could. That's right. As you advance in your abilities and the types of trips that you want to do, some of these tips may apply. That's right. Okay, so all of these tips are pretty much randomized. This is a list that's huge that I have been making notes of for the viewers for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I put them all down on paper. It's time to share them with you all. This will be three parts, maybe more into the future. So yeah. why don't we go ahead, get started. all this so that you can be safer and your adventure can be more enjoyable. That's right. Yep. So Susie will start us off here with... You need sunscreen, sunglasses, and chapstick with sunblock. It is so important. So important. So here's some chapstick that has sunblock in it. Right. I have spoken about this in previous videos, but it really needs to be rehashed again. Getting sunburned, everybody's been there. But not everybody has had their lips sunburned. Ooh. And it is one of the worst experiences that you can possibly have. It's incredibly painful. It looks terrible. I've had it happen to me one time, and I truly regretted it. Yes. Yeah, it's so bad that I do not want anybody else to make that mistake. Yeah, and one thing we quickly have learned is that, you know, while we've been traveling, is the sun is different in every place. Mm -hmm. So, where we live, it's it's not really ever been an issue, you know. Yeah, it's good to use sunscreen, but going different places, going higher elevations. Get, the sun gets more intense. The sun is more intense, so protect yourself. So, Luke usually always has sunglasses. Right. And... These right here, these are safety glasses from DeWalt. But what I like about these is, look at the coverage here. I mean, they go all the way around, just like this. No light really peeks through. So, I mean, they work very, very well for sun protection. Mm -hmm. If you're hiking on snow, so. uh, I mean, it blocks out all the light. They rock for yeah. that. If you don't know about like hiking through snow, you will literally be blinded because the sun reflects from it and goes right to your face. Snow blindness is terrible. Is you don't want that either. Yep. So also I'm gonna add to the list is a hat. So a hat, sunscreen, sunglasses, and chapstick with sunblock will protect you from the sun. That's right. Also, when it comes to sunburns, just because it's cloudy doesn't mean that you won't receive the worst sunburn of your entire life. I've been there, That's right. done that. Don't make the same mistake. That's right. Yep. So, I mean, just be prepared. I think that carries on right into the next tip. You need to be prepared, and you need to make sure that your gear is ready to go before you head out on your adventure. You need to set up your tent, make sure that it's fully waterproof, make sure that all the components are still there. Especially if your stuff has been in storage forever, you okay. know? I mean, for all you know, my, a mouse could have chewed through your tent and you have a big hole in it. So oh, yeah. check your gear. <laughs> That's right. Check the zipper on your, you know, waterproof jacket. Make sure that your uh, sleeping bag, you know, is nice and lofty, that it has been, hasn't been leaking feathers, stuff like that. So we're talking about being prepared and preparing for the worst and making sure you have everything. Well, that includes items like rain gear. Even if you're camping in a location that doesn't get a lot of rain, how do you know it won't rain when you're there? So, pack your rain gear, be prepared. Just in case. Just in case. I think uh, recently, with an overnight trip, the military surplus with moose, I was caught with my pants down in that trip. It happens to us, too. Right. So, you know... Just because the forecast doesn't say you're not going to get rain doesn't mean squat. Exactly. And then, of course, we packed all that stuff for Colorado. Did not need it oh, yeah. at all. I don't think it ever rains there. <laughs> it's so dry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we had rain gear, top, mm -hmm. bottom. We yes. also had an emergency tarp that we could throw up right? just in case. And we had pack covers because right. you don't want your packs getting soaked, too. So you need to prepare for everything. Make a list. Check it twice. Yep. Make a gear list. That's our next point. It's vital to do it. I make one every single time that I go out for a day trip. 
a backpacking trip. I make one when I go out to film. Yeah. It's so important. It, it is better to have something that you're not going to use than like forget it and try to figure out what am I going to do. Make a list, check it twice. The next tip involves pre-planning. Before you head out on any adventure, you need to learn the trails. You need to learn everything about them. Check out trail conditions, make some phone calls to forest rangers and so on. You need to know every single detail. Pre-planning is very important. That will help you in judging on what gear that you need, how much water you need to carry, and so on. Information like that can have a huge impact on your adventure. Talking about the weather again, you need to check the weather and go ahead and plan for the worst. We all know that weather changes about every five minutes. Now when it comes to backpacking and hiking, it's very important for you to stay on the trail. So important. Yep. Even when you get off to use the bathroom, make sure to pay extra attention so you can make your way back out. This happens all the time. It does. People go backpacking, they go out for a hike, have to use the bathroom, go off trail to get a little bit of privacy, and they're lost. Mm -hmm. I mean, it happens all the time. You hear about it all the time. There was a woman recently found, her body was found on the Appalachian Trail. She stepped off to go yep. pee, got lost. Yeah, and she was found just less than a mile from the trail, and she just went to use the bathroom. Right. So you do not want that to happen to you. Exactly. You know? So stay on the trail and pay extra attention to where you're going and what you're doing. And speaking about trails, do not depend on that you can follow the blazes or signage. Luke and I have been in many places where there are no signs. Yeah. There might be a sign at the trailhead, and that's it. Yeah, absolutely. So please do your research. Know where you're going. Have a way to have a map. You know, Make whether... sure that you can actually read that map and determine yes. where you are at. Yeah, and if you're using your phone... Make sure it's downloaded and that you're not depending that you need, like, cell phone service to do right. that. There's some great apps out there. Mm -hmm. All Trails is a very good one. I'm not associated with them at all, but we, it's a very good product. We have definitely been in those situations where there are no signs. Oh, yeah. There's a trail to the left, to the right, branching off in every direction. So know your trail, know where you're going. It's vital. Yes. The next tip involves shortcuts. It is my opinion not to take them. Oftentimes, what you believe to be a shortcut is actually a game trail into the middle of nowhere. Very quickly, game trails can disappear and you can become lost. Another reason to stay on trail, it's very damaging to the ecosystem and to the environment when you go off trail. A lot of our park systems, they have signs that says, you know, please stay on the trail. And that's why, whether you realize it or not, it is very damaging to the vegetation. So keep that in mind. Moving on, it's very important to know your limitations and health issues. What issues do you have which can hold you back from doing the adventure that you want to go on? With that being said, you need to pick trails and adventures that are suited for you and your uh, physicality, mm -hmm. what you can handle, right? That's very, very important. Really know yourself, train and prepare if you're gonna take on a more strenuous or more difficult trail. Absolutely. You know, when it comes to going out for these long, crazy adventures, they're incredible. But what makes them enjoyable is that you can actually do them. Being difficult is one thing. Yes. But, you know, not being ready for it is something completely different. Yes. Pick a trail that's good for you. Start practicing. Hiking, carrying your load out, get stronger, then continue to go further, higher, more intensive, and so on. So let's talk about elevation and elevation sickness for a moment. Now, elevation sickness is something that Susan did experience while we were in Colorado. I believe that I had mild symptoms. Um, I experienced nausea, uh, feeling very lightheaded. I also experienced my heart racing very fast, and I just had this feeling that I had to sit down and rest and let my heart rate calm back down. As it gets more severe, it can become very serious, very dangerous. People are known to make incredibly weird decisions when like, mm -hmm. it's in full swing, right? So as we were hiking along, she's not feeling too good. We're going slow, lots of breaks. I was making sure like, to talk to her, make sure that her thinking made sense. I definitely added a lot of time to our hiking because I had to continuously stop. 
but I never felt like I was in a dangerous situation and I would rest and I would be like, okay, my heart rate's better. I don't feel nauseous. I don't feel lightheaded. I want to keep going. Nice. But when those feelings came back, I had to stop again. So it did add a lot of additional time onto our hiking. By that night, she was feeling 100%. 100%. The things that I did do for elevation sickness was ibuprofen, water, and carbs. Like I said, I had mild symptoms that goes from moderate to severe. You need to know, are you in a dangerous situation? I felt like I was thinking clearly. I was talking clearly. It just took me a lot more time. When it comes to elevation sickness, there's no real indicator if you're going to suffer by it or not. Everyone's different. It hits people differently. Make smart decisions. If right. you're having issues, you don't feel right, turn around. That's not quitting. So that wraps up part one of our tips series. Make sure to pay attention to the channel. More parts are coming up. Lots of great tips. And I do mean lots. Lots. Yeah, lots. <laughs> so strength and honor, everyone. Bye. Bye.